Good news, everyone. There's a free GPU render on the market. It's called Centilio. I mean, it's only free. Well, it's an alpha and it's um, not very new. It's been around for years and years. I think I read about it in a paper magazine. Remember those things when you flip them open and read them. So yeah, and it actually does a lot of stuff. It supports X particles color. It doesn't support hair render yet, but it can render hair. I'll show you later. Just watch in the end, it's there. And it's really nice. I mean, it. I think if I didn't have Octane, I'd probably use it. It's, it's free, right? Let's go have a look at all the features. It's pretty fun. Need rigs. Ace Fight Studios has rigs. So where do you start with a render engine quick review? Well, I have the scene. I sent it to as an IPR and it renders cubes with depths of field. Uh, currently it's running on a 1060, so it's going way slower than it should be because for some reason screen recording and my 2060 is just having some weird conflicts. But basically I say it's a pretty fast render engine. Maybe I'll do some comparisons with Octane. If you want me to post some comparisons, uh, let me know in the comments. But generally it's, it's what it is. It has a camera settings. It has depth of field, which you can turn off if you want, turn on, reduce it, increase it. Okay, maybe that's too much. Still too much. There you go. So it's pretty good. Um, has some settings here for camera setting, exposure, highlight compensation, whatnot. Let's change this back to like five or 15. There you go. Um, and you have autofocus, so you can click where you want the focus to be. It works like any other render. It's a GP renderer. It has two types of materials. It has a regular material, which you go by create materials, nope, extension, plugins, Centileo, and material. And this material is basically just like a Cinema 4D material standard one. It's just diffuse reflections. You can turn stuff on, off, whatever, transparencies, wherever you want. So if we have our cubes here, if we apply this to the cubes, just like a regular material, this won't update unless you turn on the auto update thing here. And now when you, Change something here. Maybe I press play and then the auto update. There you go. So it's pretty interactive. Um, you can also change camera direction. It's very snappy. Um, currently it uses uh, a HDRI map. I'm, no, actually I'm using just a gray default light. I can turn on HDRI map and I have this little sky object and I can change this overall multiplier to five or whatever. You just load it in here. So. It's pretty solid that way. Um, it also has regular lights, it's an area light. Um, again, very responsive. And remember this is on a 1060, so if you have a better video card, it's much faster. Uh, where, we're not, where are we going next? Um, yeah, materials. Basically, creation of materials is straightforward. You also have this node-based material. Um, if you go to Centilo, click material, it'll create this node material. And if you open it, you get the regular C4D node editor with all the stuff. But I'll show you this in the X particles part. Uh, let's turn off this light and get back to our sky. Um, the only catch here is when you create metals. Okay, that's the wrong thing that I hid there. There you go. Auto focus on this. As you can see here, it's like a Transformers head. I got it from Oleg's Kit Bash Kit. Um, creating metals when you have your regular Centilio material here. Um, let's apply it to our head here. So it's, if we want this to be a metal, usually what you do is you go to diffuse, you set it to black and you just jack up the reflection to max. But here it's still black. It turns out here you have to get your IOR and you have to put it to like 20 and then it becomes a chrome reflective material. So that's the only non-standard thing that you have in, and this IOR is separate for each shader. So if you add a, whatever it is, um, transmission, no translucency, no alpha. Nope. Um, anyway, the other stuff that you add will screen material here. Um, this is a node material and it uses, let's open that up. So click on it and you'll have your diffuse. How do I make it transparent? 
Oh, transmission. Yeah, so there's transmission. Transmission has its own IOR, so the IOR of the metal doesn't really affect the IOR of the other parts of the shader. And there you have it. It doesn't have a built-in denoiser, but it does work with a denoiser that's... If you go to effects and you add denoiser, works very well with that. Um, let's go have a look at the next scene that I have, because it does support particle color, which is great. As you can see here, we have particle colors going in. Um, if you open your particle material, it has to be a node material. And you have this particle info node, which we found here, particle info. And then if you just feed the color directly into the color, you'll get exactly what X particle colors are. But you can also feed it through a gradient and you can have any preset you want. It's that easy. Um, yeah, so X particles color works. Uh, it doesn't support trail colors yet because it only it doesn't support rendering splines, but you can actually get it to render hair, which is pretty decent. It's a bit of a workaround. Um, you need to put the wrong thing. Um, um, it's a pretty decent. It works. You know, you can sculpt it and. It's going to force a refresh sometimes. I recommend caching it if you're going to render animation with it. Um, but I got this, oops, wrong. Uh, basically, as you can see, it works. It's not super fast, but it works. This was a uh, one that I let it render for a bit longer. So you get it. The only thing is setting it up is a bit uh, not so straightforward. Let's do this with a new material. Let's delete this stuff. Um, let's pause this for a second. If I create, if I select the sphere, and I go simulate and add here. If I render now, nothing will happen. Um, what I do, what does work though, is if you go to generate and you pick type and you pick circle, but make sure in hairs here, you just delete a zero, otherwise it's too much. And you'll see it appears in the viewport. And this does make your viewport pretty heavy. Well, actually, well, it makes this process very slow. Um, but it does, work. And when you hit render, there's a way to overcome it. I'll show you in a second. So there you go, you got your hair. What you have to do to fix the viewport issue is just go to editor and untick this. And then you still have your hair here, but here it's much more manageable and quicker too. And you can pick how many hairs you want there to, dem to you know, demonstrate. And just apply the material, the centrally material on top. So you can get your uh, nice gold. And then you use the regular hair material settings. Make sure you don't replace it. Make sure it's still there. And then you can add frizz and kink and clump and whatnot. And, you know, it works. Uh, yeah, it's really... Maybe increase this to like 15 so it's a bit brighter there. But basically, yeah, it's... Uh, you can render hair with it, so it's not as native or as fast, but you can get some nice results. If you want to see more stuff about hair, let me know because I don't know, it takes a while to test it out and learn the stuff. So skin to, skin is another thing. What I like is when you make a new material, like you make a new regular material from extensions, and uh, when you turn on subsurface scattering, or is it subsurface? The first thing that it creates is basically a skin material. It has a three layered SSS, so shallow, mid and deep. And let's hit render, just see how it looks. As you can see, the light travels through. All you have to do is just change the default radius scale to whatever is appropriate, because initially it was set to like one or something and it wasn't really shining through, but you can set it up to whatever material, whatever value you want and it shines through and you have your colors here so you can control how it shines through, get it shining through its blue or purple. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it works out of the box, renders pretty fast. Oh yeah, if we turn the light on here to get our full light, you'll see it's a bit overexposed. It's way too overexposed. Let's bring it down to like three maybe or something or even one. Um, let's keep it at three so it's a bit overexposed so we can see. There's a settings dialog here with a bunch of settings, but you actually have exactly the same settings if you turn it off. If you just go to your render settings. Um, by the way, the shortcuts don't work unless you click out of the IPR. And here you have this highlight uh, white 
and you can it's basically a highlight compression in like tone mapping so you can reduce how exposed it is and here also you can lower the exposure so you have this nice kind of control over getting an image that you want um yeah it's really nice and you have you know vignetting here which you can't really see on this render but you have a bunch of little post effects no glows but still very handy uh, and it's free did i mention it's free <laughs> render engine for cinema 40 what else do you know that's free for cinema 40 that gives you this kind of result um, i haven't really stress tested it with lots of geometry again let me know if that's something that interests you i'll see how it handles a forest but basically yeah, this is what i want to go over it's a really nice engine it's it works cinema 40 friendly has a bunch of features node-based materials if you need them or if you don't just use the regular ones yeah so go check it out on the website download it give it a spin let me know what you think see you next time thanks for watching and as always remember if you need rigs ace5 studios has rigs we have free rigs up here that you can use in your personal projects we have Mari and Mia and 5 Pack for explainers and arms and legs. And Maria has a bunch of cats and animals you can use. And here, if you go through Mari, has a full face rig, which you can, you know, it's lots of functionality. You can use them in your projects. Mia is also fully rigged. Um, you can use her as a host or to sell your product. Um, also have the arms and legs pack, which you can put together to build your own characters. And they're already rigged, so you don't need to do any weight painting. You just have to stick them together and ready to go. Or you have 5J people for your explainer videos and other stuff. So don't forget to check it out and see you next time.